Ladies and gentlemen, we are here in a new semester of St. Clair College. It's been a while since I've been behind the desk, and I am <laughs> elated to be joined by the one and only Theo, also known as the Holy One. How are you doing today? And doing good I know today. you're excited for the upcoming match. Yeah, I mean, you forgot to introduce yourself, Daniel uh, uh, Barson McGee. And mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. said, starting a day, League of Legends, we've got our Saints taking on Converse. It's a very exciting matchup, and it should be a game full of surprises today. Absolutely. And uh, honestly, Especially since we've been doing this for a while, you know, I have some experience behind the desk and casting for the Saints, but today, I don't know, it feels special. I just feel really excited. I think maybe it's because I'm just pumped up. I played a little bit of League the other day. <laughs> I know I've been playing a lot of Deadlock. I know you play a lot of League and the guys up there are obviously playing a lot of League. I just feel excited and I know this seems to be fantastic. The Saints, I know, maybe excited, maybe nervous, maybe a little bit of a mix of both. They have three new rookies on this team, but they're still doing fantastic and it's the start of the Nace season. I'm sure they want to prove themselves to be a dominant force in this roster, right? Yeah, absolutely. We got a new top laner, mid laner, and ADC. So it is a lot of change for a team to go through. You know, they haven't been together too long, but hopefully they can get on track quickly with a win here. Yeah, and you can see them getting ready. We got Miracle. He was uh, a <laughs> bit of a new face before, but now I guess you could call him a bit of a vet. The one and only Ricky and Maddie appearing from the shadows and going back to whence he came into the dimensions that shall not be named. But still, this is the rest of the team we got. And like we said, some of the new faces, two of the rookies starting today. Three, we got vets, some less veteran than others, but vets nonetheless compared to their teammates. Yeah, and uh, Alonzo's their coach. He's been their coach for a while, has been in that slot, and hopefully he can bring this team uh, together, get them on the same page against a very strong opponent today. It's not going to be easy to win this one, but you can see the guys, they're getting locked in. <laughs> well, I wonder you know? what he's looking at on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, looking, he's probably looking up some gameplay, some like some like things to get ready for the match. No, got to be in a good mood seems like everyone is there relaxed so hopefully they can put on the show today for us to absolutely relax is exactly what you want to be and i feel like this team is a really good example of a relaxed calm and confident team you look at maddie you see him walk into a room he just exudes an aura an atmosphere of like i'm absolutely. good at what i do and same with ricky those two they're just such beasts and they've made their mark on the scene yep. and uh, I feel like those rookies on their team just sitting next to those guys hopefully they can just scrape up some of that pressure some of that energy and kind of use it to build up their own name you know yeah absolutely Miracle did that last year you know yeah. Alonzo was on the support and then Miracle kind of came in took over learned from Alonzo and learned how to play the rest of the team and you saw, you see, you saw what success he had last year and uh, he's only improving still a very young player and talented so it's going to be a big season for him and with the new ADC down that ball lane. It's definitely going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I'm excited to see how they play around each other. One of the best parts about League of Legends and games of that genre are the dynamic elements of the gameplay that kind of allow you to differentiate yourself from other people, you know? Miracle playing with a different ADC versus who he's playing with today, it's not going to be the same thing. People have different nuances, different little um, ticks that make them really unique from other people that they're playing with and i'm excited to see for the first time like you said our new adc in action and obviously you know miracle also i guess of the non-rookie players the newest member of the team as well yeah got a lot of new things going on like i feel like it's gonna be le i feel like if i was standing on that stage right now it's gonna be like lemon scented you know it's just fresh off the presses <laughs> fresh out of the oven cooked up and ready to go but speaking of cooked up and ready to go how's league doing meta wise like what have they been doing to that game i mean so far? Meta has been pretty stale, but I mean, it is what it is. That's a, For a patch, okay. obviously, the, the meta just stays the same, but there's some quirky picks like Nasus mid, Garen mid, oh, some, okay. some random snowballs like that. I know Ricky likes to play some god knows what champs up in the top lane. He'll pick Olaf, Darius, like he'll just play a bully lane. So we'll, we'll see if Saints decide to prioritize the grubs or if they play around uh, the bots of the map and play for those dragons. And speaking of playing for the Grubs, playing for the Dragons, those are some treats that your team would love to vie for and fight. But speaking of treats, we got another one coming up here for you Saints fans at home. We have a legendary <laughs> member of this squad. I even felt my, my chest, my heart rate increasing once I saw him in the doorway. We have the one, the only, Ricky LaFleur here at the desk for us just to break down his thoughts going into this uh, first match for Nace. How are you feeling today, Ricky? Feeling good, good Daniil. Feeling good. Good to be back. First match of the season. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. 
Absolutely. And I know I said I'm a bit of a dynamic duo, but I know you and Theo are a bit of a dynamic duo right now. Theo, what, like, you know his <laughs> gameplay probably more than his coach. Like, what's going through your mind? What do you think he's thinking? Get three leers deep for us here. Well, he's definitely going to be cooking up something devious in the top lane today. Um, meta is a bit spicy up there now, so don't know what you see. You're going up against Converse, a very, very strong team. What have you guys done to prepare for such a big matchup? Um... We've been practicing a lot with our new players and trying to work out some uh, communications and stuff like that. Everything with new players is just like you have to just play some games with them and get used mm -hmm. to playing with them. Uh, we've scrimmed this team before, um, so we're looking forward to this matchup. I think we should be able to win, but you never know, right? So. And uh, going to this match, can the fans at home expect to see any signature Ricky champions coming in? Or are you guys experimenting with anything new this season? Well, we're experimenting with a lot of new bot lane picks. Okay. But for me personally, you're probably going to see what you always see, which is just like, you know, my naturals, Darius, anything fighter. Anything fighter is probably what you'll see tonight. Fantastic. <laughs> anything, less, uh, anything left for him, Theo? Um, you know what? Let's see how confident you guys are. What's the score prediction for Ooh, today's match? I like that one. I like a 2 0. 2 0. Like a two zero. Get us home early. But we don't hate dropping one map. Okay. For the content. For the content. <laughs> Absolutely. Get more clips for us at home. Well, Ricky, it's always a pleasure to have you, whether it's behind the desk or super behind the desk <laughs> out in the Nexus. Anything you'd like to say to everybody at home, to us, to, to Dan standing over there before you head off to play your game? Go Dan! Go Dan! Go Let's Dan. go! <laughs> Let's go, baby! <laughs> Fantastic, awesome. ladies and gentlemen. Well, before we potentially throw it to a quick break as we get ready to head into this Game 1 situation, once again, I want to just think a little bit more about how League of Legends has been playing out and just anticipate what we can see going into the Rift. Now, a lot of the different strategies you said you've been experimenting with different bot lane picks. Ultimately, it all comes down to the fact you have new players. And do you think they're adjusting and adapting comfortably? Um, I would love to think so. I guess tonight will be the showing whether or not that we've adjusted. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably what's going to happen. You're going to see. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. He has spoken. <laughs> now let's get ready for this game. We'll see you guys very soon after a quick break. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never all right, mind. Ricky, you can go. You can go Google you can practice. Go, Ricky. It was good seeing you. Theo and I are the professional <laughs> scholars, all right? <laughs> well, in well, any case, yeah. Ricky's left the building. We're going to leave the building temporarily as we get ready for this first game. See you later, Ricky. See you in go second. kill it out there. <laughs> Let's go. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got your popcorn. I hope you got your ice cream sandwiches and pizza, potentially. Whatever you want to eat, get cozy because we are coming into the St. Clair versus Converse University draft. First pick Smolder. I know if Amanda was here today, she'd be excited <laughs> to see that one, and Ivern's going to be the response pick. I feel like, you know, Dragon probably beats Tree in this situation, but we're to kind of pick up that gap, but... I think those are two solid picks coming up from Converse. Saints so going to have to respond. Yeah, Converse definitely have a plan. Blind picking their top laner and Ivern instantly into the smolder. Smolder will probably be going over to the mid lane. Mm -hmm. That's where it's been played the most. We can take a look at the bands. A Rumble, Hui, and Maokai for the side of St. Clair. Saints, Converse, and banning out the Ziggs, Misfortune, and Lilia. You know, Lilia, not something you see banned too often, but Maddie is an excellent Lilia player. So that's going to be out of there. Varus looks to be the pickup here for the Saints for that ADC. So they're going to be going for that double ADC composition. Let's see, probably picking Jungle next. They're going to go maybe for the Skarner, instantly locking it in. So definitely they have a plan for Converse's plan, playing the Skarner into the Ivern, but they can also flex it to the top lane. I got to admit, Theo, the last time I saw Skarner, he looked completely different. So <laughs> seeing this new Skarner, I have no idea what he's going to be anticipating um, to bring to this game. We're going to see the Corky. This is something I'm familiar with. Okay? Yeah. That's a predictable, understandable character we're going to be seeing as a response pick potentially. But with the lineup the Saints have so far, do you feel like their game plan is more suited for them playing passively or aggressively? And I don't, do they feel comfortable doing I that? I mean, Saints definitely have uh, the scaling on their side here. They picked that Smolder mm -hmm. for their exact reason. They're going to go with that Corky in the mid lane against Smolder, it kind of gives a Smolder a pretty pretty easy lane, a pretty easy way to stack up unless the Corky can really put the pedal to the metal, but it's going to be an interesting matchup here in the mid lane, probably pretty passive throughout mm. the early game. So we have three picks each. It's going to be Converse banning out the Olaf. They, <laughs> the they definitely heard of Ricky. Um, Darius is still up though, which is uh, not the worst matchup to Renekton. So I think that might be the pick as Ash is picked to uh, block Banned away by the Saints. Nautilus is going to get taken now by Converse. The Saints are on the last ban. How do we feel about Gragas, though? Is that something you're comfortable playing into Renekton? I feel like they're both lifesteal heavy and just like passive health Absolutely. region fighters. But I feel like Ricky, he, he's... He plays Gragas. He's comfortable on like... He's got three characters. You're really going to ban all he's three? He's got a lot of characters. You know? A lot. So they're not going to waste Jin. that. But Jin going to be another counter pick. I feel like... I don't know. That's a little risky in this lineup, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting pickup. Obviously, not the highest damage ADC. Pretty decent lane, but if played to perfection, it will be good. Let's see what the Saints decide to go with here. Rel, mm. that's Mir Miracle's signature pick at this point. I okay. feel like he's so good on this Rel. Always finds the huge engages as now. It's going to be Ricky. We're going to pick something top, unless it's a Varus top, which would be uh, very, very interesting. I don't know if he practices down too much, but I'm assuming we're going to get a Gragas or a Darius, as you were saying. Maybe even an Aatrox, unless he's banned out, Gangplank? which is not. Definitely not Gangplank. <laughs> okay. not Gangplank. Definitely not, but those are the three options looking very strong. Gragas. And there it is. You called yep. it the Gragas. Uh, going to be one of the only AP champions on his team. Very, very good pickup. I didn't even think about the AP versus physical uh, matchup here, and they do want to round it off. We're seeing Varus probably going to be in that ADC. AD. Position, Smolder. Smolder in the mid, Skarner, that's going to be our jungler, Rel support, right? Um, we're seeing a good balance of AP burst versus the uh, physical burst. You want to make sure you're having both of them so they can't just scale one way or the other. Last pick, Leona, thinking that's probably so they're going to be the support, Ivern jungle yep. then. Of course. Um, Renekton top, Corky mid, Jin ADC. That seems to be most likely what we're going to be going for here. Yep. But in any case, Looking at these lineups, just my first impressions immediately, and this is the way I like to look at most kind of um, drafts, especially coming from Dota. It's a little bit scarier to have to play um, with initiative. You don't want to always be the ones that have to play into your opponents unless you feel confident that you can play better than your opponents consistently. If you're even scaled, you always want to be uh, comfortable knowing that you can just let the game go by, scale, 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 farm, 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 and you're going to win the game at some point. Looking at the Saints lineup, immediately I get the impression that that's going to be their game plan, just scale, 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 and if they want to take initiative, they can't, but they don't have to, whereas Converse, I feel like they're kind of forced to make things happen on the map, and yeah. if things go wrong for them, it can get away from them pretty fast. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to see Converse playing towards the top side of the map here as mm -hmm. Renekton, when he gets that level yeah. 6 spike, will be way stronger in those skirmishes and Saints won't have too much firepower with the Skarner and Gragas to kill that Renekton too often. So I think Saints definitely going to look to play towards the boss side of the map and Converse are either going to try and match that or just play top side of the map and we're going to get a Grubs against the Dragon matchup, it seems like. Yeah, potentially. And yeah, I definitely see them favoring top side. Their strategy is a little, pun intended, top heavy, right? They have to rely 
relying on their Necton to carry them through the early to mid game, and then they can start relying on their Jin. Jin, notoriously, kind of like you mentioned, he's not the most effective ADC in those early to mid levels. Obviously, most ADCs aren't, right? But at least they have some ability to skirmish, trade. Yeah. Jin, not at all. <laughs> not a, I mean, he just likes to sit at range, yeah. follow up on CC. Leona, obviously, one of the best support champs in the game, so a very strong pairing there, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting game. I think Saints definitely going to be playing around their ADC this game. For sure. Saints I'm um, playing around their ADC, but one thing I noted for sure about their game plan was they can play around anybody, honestly. Yeah. If Maddie kind of runs away with the game, which he tends to do, they're going to be able to do that. Scorner can still kind of grab you and run away with yeah, it, right? Yeah, he can do that. Okay. Grab Jin, run away with Jin. Grab Renekton, your whole team can just kill him immediately. And what's going to be the response? You're going to have your Corky do something? In Absolutely theory, yes. not. In theory, but on paper, you're playing against the Saints. And the Saints, they are a very dynamic team. They adapt very well. And they're going to be able to do a lot of things to disrupt the game plan coming from Converse University. And I feel like, like I mentioned, when your game plan is cut and dry and it's simple to execute, uh, well, it's uh, simple on paper, execution is a different story when you're playing against a team that's equal skill, if not better than you, right? So mm -hmm. it's going to be easy to disrupt, and once it gets disrupted, you don't have a lot of uh, options afterwards. But the Saints, adaptable lineup, adaptable players, and they have a lot more options to play with, in my opinion. But the draft from Converse University, if they are able to execute their plan or even just not get disrupted, I think things are going to be a lot more simple for them and possibly run away with the game level. Yeah, one little thing. Um, they do have two ADCs, the Saints, so Ivern's ultimate daisy won't be as effective. It'll get cut down really quickly, mm. as if if you had like a mid laner that was melee, that Ivern would get infinite value. So I think the WEC comp is definitely a good answer to the Ivern first pick. Absolutely. And now I'm thinking about the mid matchup, and I feel that's so important for most situations, obviously, most of the MOBAs especially. And I'm looking at the Smolder versus Corky. Um, who do you really favor here? And this, hey. This could be the chance for uh, Flocon, I think his name was. I know his name is JoJo, yeah. um, to really shine and show he's capable of in his debut match for the Saints on stream. But just as easily, it could kind of run away from him. Who do you kind of favor in that matchup, Smolder versus Corky? Well, is there a clear winner there? Uh, I think Corky's a little bit stronger okay. um, in the lane phase. But if, if Smolder can just hold on and get those stacks, just not die and farm well, uh, the later the game goes, I think Smolder definitely has the advantage. So yeah. it's going to be Saints trying to play more passive in the early game around that mid lane as Corky can definitely jump on you and do a lot of damage, especially in the state he's in now. So they have to be careful around that mid lane, just play to survive, play to farm, and uh, mid lane should be looking good. And the thing is, Ivern, honestly, as a jungler, isn't that uh, scary of a ganker. So Smolder should theoretically be able to play yeah. fairly comfortably. But ladies and gentlemen, before we send it to a quick break, while we get ready to head into this game, any final thoughts on the draft before we uh, wrap this one up? Yeah, both drafts are good. Uh, I'm going to favor the Saints uh, by yeah. a little bit. Um, and that's it. I think they're, they put themselves in a good position draft-wise to win this game. So now it's going to be all up to gameplay. I favor the Saints by a lot of it, just based <laughs> off of what I said. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll see who favors who when the rift comes for you. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
welcome back everybody we are just about to get into game one st Clair college on the left side we have ricky maddie okan league and miracle and on the side of converse we have eagle zav duckman ph hope one phantom star best of three series game one the most important game let's see who can get off to a hot start yeah, like I was just speculating a little bit earlier, um, Flocon versus Duckman in this mid lane. I feel like a lot of the early game tempo is going to rely on this, as well as Eagle versus Ricky in the top lane, Gragas versus Renekton. Uh, Ricky is going to be able to kind of flip and carry the team's weight on his shoulders a little bit easier with that Gragas, but Renekton is kind of forced into that position as no one else really can take up that mantle on the side of the team. Who can really take the initiative on the side of Converse University? It's not going to be the Leona, it's not going to be the Ivern, really. It's it's going to have to be this next one. So I feel like all eyes are going to be on this top lane and mid lane is going to be the kind of the uh, ignition that gets top lane sparked. Um, but it could go either way, ladies and gentlemen, as we're just getting this game started. A lot of actions brewing already, even in the bottom side. It looks like both uh, bottom duos are kind of squaring off and the mid lane's just getting started between Flocon and Duckman. A lot of damage traded out. They're both around even and uh, now the minions are clashing. The game can be considered started. Yeah, and you're going to see Skarner pathing from top to bot as Ivern's going to be pathing, I don't really know Ivern pathing too well, but looks like he's starting on those bot camps. So let's see where each jungler decides to head top lane. Should be a pretty passive lane. It's going to be hard for um, Eagle to kill Reiki here. And mid lane also going to be pretty passive lane. Bot lane, there might be some uh, fireworks. Pretty slow start so far. Nothing too crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. As Maddie is finishing up his Gromp, gonna maybe look for a level 4 gank on the enemy ball lane. Ivern can even go for level 3 gank here on the smolder, but decides to go for the full clear. Still, not gonna be too much happening. It looks like Converse are gonna have Pryo in all three lanes. Yeah, we're seeing Saints pushed back to their tower here. He's gonna be able to comfortably farm on a League and his Varus. Miracle on the Rel here. Both pretty healthy on both teams. Not a lot of damage is being traded out, but both junglers kind of meeting the halfway point of their early game pathing. Definitely seems to ganks Ricky getting in an exchange with Ego coming out into the health deficit, but should be able to heal himself back up pretty quick. CS wise, both uh, top laners, well, not looking very good for Ricky. Renekton absolutely beasting on him. 18 to 7. He's going to have a lot more farm. But mid lane, Flocon getting a little bit of an exchange, not going to lead to too much. Arrow's coming out, slowing him down. Renekton in the jungle at the top side, actually. Kind of maybe scoping things out, making sure nothing too crazy is going on. Leona in the mid lane looking for a gank, potentially. Like I said, a lot of early game action. I'm expecting to see, making sure that mid laner's top laner is going to have a good game. But heading back to the bottom, this Leona. Ivern making his way top. Hiding in that bush, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike to just really cement this uh, early game advantage for the top laner. Ego going in Ricky. Ivern's not going to be here, and this is going to be now a nice Ricky favored trade. Ego uh, not going to be having the level advantage in this. It's going to be pretty difficult to make anything happen. Ricky's going to come out on top. Ivern's going to be coming up now, though. Going for the flash. Nothing to get that kill finished off. Going to flash up, get the stun shield. It's going to be very hard to get the kill for Ricky. We're going to see a nice kill for Ego. An Ego kill, one may say. And as first blood, going with Converse University. Yeah, I mean, Ego knowing his limits perfectly there. Knows he doesn't die to the flash. E auto. There's going to be an engage in the balling here. Miracle gets caught, forced to flash out. Forced to lose so much of his HP. A great start here for Converse at the beginning of this game. The root hits as they have to be careful down his ball lane. But the Ivern was roaming around that top lane, is able to give his Renekton that first of blood as Ricky will come back into lane with teleport and look to keep the pressure up there as both top laners use their teleport after that play. Mm -hmm. And uh, ball lane still pretty even. Saints have Pryo, won't be able to shove this wave in, but let's see if they're able to get this next one. You can see Ivern pinging. He wants to come here and not let the Saints crash here. And that looks like it's gonna work out. The Saints have to be careful without actually no vision in this jungle. Ivern is on his way, and it looks like there's gonna be a skirmish towards that ball, and it's definitely not gonna be Saints a favorite. Can they maybe get one back? No, Miracle is gonna get taken out first, and Lig definitely won't be surviving 
this one. Converse with a great start to this game as they're up three kills to zero. Like I said, they have a simple game plan. They just have to make sure it goes off without a hitch. And they're dedicating all the resources to make sure that the lanes go as smoothly as possible. Because if they were behind by any little bit, they would be struggling to get the game going in their favor. And only lane that's kind of unaffected by all this chaos right now is going to be the middle lane. Bottom has been ganked. Top has been ganked. Matty looking oh, to even things up a little bit. He's running him down. He's going to miss. Going to go for a slam. Bringing him closer to the tower. Ricky evening things up a little bit. He wants that kill. Trade it back to me. I want to get my get back, taking him all the way around the world. Oh. Going for it, trying to break their ankles and almost does, but still, Ricky's going to get the kill and the balance in all things has been restored. Yeah, that's good for the Saints. Ricky's going to get a kill, a plate over here in the mid lane for Flocon. That's amazing if you're playing Smolder. Ivern going to look for a gank here. He's going to flash Q here. Doesn't look he's going to do so. Miracle mm -hmm. is here for the backup just in case. Uh, Dragon hasn't been taking a Grove spawning in just a few seconds here. Let's see what team decides to go for what. It looks like Balin gonna be down there for both sides. So it doesn't look like anyone's over rotating, but Leona is up in that top lane. So it looks like Converse willing to sack the bot 2v1. Let's see if they play for these grubs. I'm really like, oh, gonna get a kill with the assistance of Miracle coming from the jungle. You don't really expect to see that coming, especially this early in the game. Rotations from the supports all around the map. Looking to turn into something more potentially. A lot of pings coming out. Somebody's angry, somebody's upset, but most importantly, everybody's alert and aware of what's going on, which is the most important thing. Mid lane, kind of heating up a little bit. Duckman pushing Flocon back, sending him back to his tower and gonna get a favorable trade for the side of Converse University and maybe even a kill if things go a little bit better. Flocon Matt solo. Matty is here, however, just like you said, chasing him back into the bushes, but he doesn't want to let up on that kill just yet. It looks like he's still lingering around. Matty chasing him down, but bottom side, Phantom Star taking a bit of heat. Gonna look for something here, but still, People are going to walk away with their lives, but I'm loving the chaos that's going on. Everybody's playing to the best degree that they can, making sure that they can balance things up and put pressure where they need to. Phantom Star running down Miracle unknowingly. It's going to take a bit of damage as a result, but still, things are stable in the bottom side. What I'm worried about right now is mid and top, as there's a lot of pings going on, a lot of hero icons rushing each other down. Is something going to go down here? Yeah, What's the grubs. Yeah, they're, they're contesting it. Renekton also making his way over to that riverside. If you could take a look over onto that top side, Corky is trying to contest the grubs. Maddie is here and uh, looks like they're giving it. Yeah, just keeping things stable, keeping it slow. Ivern's going to be taking it up. Uh, Eco keeping Ricky at bay. Bottom side, it's just a constant invasion on all parts of the map. Void Grub is finally going to get picked up. And uh, looks like some pressure is being put down bottom as well as top at the same time. It's difficult for both teams to make anything lasting. But still, things are finally slowing down a little bit. We're going to see the recall from League make his way back. Miracle holding the line. Yeah, I mean, that's a good play for Converse. They're able to get the Grubs for free. They don't even lose the Dragon. The Saints kind of just sat around top lane, but they can never really fight this with this Renekton uh, being a little bit far ahead, and that 3v3 just does not favor them at this point in the game. Surprised they didn't opt to play around the ball lane during that time, but it's a great play for Converse. And now they're going to be on pace to match Saints on that Dragon or even take it themselves. The Saints are all hitting a reset. Ricky up in this top lane. Uh, as soon as he gets uh, a couple items, mm. he's just big chill and he has infinite mana, he can't really die, so a uh, good matchup for him. He's going to be able to scale up, but only on 46 CS, which is uh, not very good. Converse's top laner, they're honoring next to Nico, having a great game and definitely winning that lane out so far, but that's expected in uh, that matchup. Ricky's just here for the AP damage and the incredible team fighting Gragas provides. Yeah, Gragas, especially with Ricky controlling him, can just be very disruptive in a way that you really need to line up your team comp, and he doesn't require a huge commitment of resources for that either. Whereas, like I mentioned, this Renekton looks to be the leading force for this team. Bottom side, looks like a bit of an engagement might be coming up. I think they might have been sensing the urge to go Dragon welling up in the side of St. Clair College as Maddie makes his way over. So does Ivern, an invasion potentially. No, Maddie's just going to be scanning for wards and make his way over. They know, or he knows that now they see him. Two wards up here, Phantom Star and Ivern pushing up now, seeing 
they can look for something, but both teams forcing are going to disengage. Yeah, they're going to be forcing up this dragon right here. Let's see. I think Converse will definitely take a peek over here. I'm not sure if they're going to fully contest it, but it looks like they are. Will Saints choose first one now. Daisy is out so strong at this point in the game. They do get the dragon for free. And I don't think there's going to be any fight here. Converse should just walk out, but it looks like they want to fight this. Skarner is deep in there. Maddie should be able to get out alive. The ball wave will be dropped. A few minions there for the Saints, but they do get the dragon. They get out unscathed. Uh, they get the teleporter out from the Korkias. Smooth is going to ult the mid wave to get a good reset here. Uh, nice little play there, and overall, pretty good for the Saints. There goes out the Varus ulti, able to hit on the Leona. They're going to use everything. Can they finish off this Leona? Yes, Lick picks that one up. A beautiful play by the Saints to get that pick. Gives the, a little bit extra gold into that versus pocket, who's going lethality, and that's overall in the past minute. Great play by the St. Clair Saints. Absolutely beautiful, and now all of that going on. We've reached the 10-minute mark, which is when I like to do a little bit of an economic analysis to <laughs> really break things down. We're 3-3, to 10-30 in, 17.1 to 18k St. Clair College at the deficit here. Ivern looking to widen that gap just a little bit more, potentially. Ricky in the crosshairs once again. He's been an easy target for this team to put pressure on, but the Saints honestly don't even really care. Like I mentioned it before, low commitment hero still provides a lot of value. He could have one item and it doesn't matter. He's still going to be a bit of an issue to deal with. He's just such an innately valuable hero just to his abilities uh, and the way you use them properly. But still, it, there's going to be a little bit of action picking up in that jungle side. Matty trying to try to peacefully take his Gromp, but he's getting disrupted. You know, he's a pacifist. He's not even going to look at them. He just wants to take his uh, little camp here. But uh, Ward is going to allow them to get full vision of what's going on. The middle lane looks like something could have happened if not thanks to the vision coming out from Miracle. A good ward planted out, but it's going to be broken down by the red ones. Things are scary. They're scanning. They're looking for things. They want to find something, but an engagement over on the top side looks to be eminent. Uh, middle lane as well. Keeping that pressure going. Maddie making his way top. Looking to burrow through the wall. Not going to engagement. So, yes, she is coming through. Looking for the pressure. Daisy's coming through. Eagle's low HP, but uh, Renekton on low HP isn't truly low HP. In fact, he just wants you to think that he is, so they're not going to commit too hard. Just stabilize, make sure they can keep themselves healthy and good to go maintain their farm. But, oh, League gets a kill, but it's a trade. Yeah, <laughs> one v one trade kill. Uh, while well, we're here with the Ricky ASMR Ego, looking to get that nice lifesteal, pressuring up Maddie uh, in the area, I believe. They're fighting this. A nice fight for the Rift and the Grubs. Coming through the Dragon Fire. The ball is going to bring that back up. Miracle stunning them up, disrupting so heavily. Flocon chasing, doing a lot of damage. Another double stun coming up from Miracle. They're going to be forced to flash over that wall. Oh, Maddie so looking for that pressure onto the Renekton, but they're going to find three just in there. Not going to be able to land that damage. They're still maintaining that pressure. Maddie's going to find one. Phantom Star running for his life back to the tier two tower. Can you find something? Miracle, no, not quite. Forced to retreat, but they still got. One. I, I can't. They only got one. I just realized. I really feel like a lot more people would have died there, but yeah. Converse University only managing to lose one person in that exchange. Honestly, not bad. I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely not good. For True. Converse. Yeah. They used Corky Flash. They used Ivan Flash. They used Renekton Flash. Yes, yeah. Saints did use Flocon and Maddie's flashes uh, there as well, and uh, Lick uses Flash in that one v one against the Jin. So. Um, Saints are going to get the three grubs, so both teams at three. Nobody's going to have those boilings spawning in. That's very good for them. Gragas uh, has his item. That's why he was able to do so much in that <laughs> fight as well. And the fact that the Smolder one stack away on that call, that's so sad. Couldn't get the perfect CS on the back. Looks like Maddie's going to opt not to take this last grub. He's scared of the Ivern coming. But the Varus is going to get hit. Insta cleanse. But does get hit by W, but that's Leona ult out. Cleanse out. Definitely a good trade for Converse. That E hits. Miracle it's going to be a root coming out onto the gen. Rel coming up here. Huge stun. Two turn Huge. shots onto Hope. They're going to one shot him. And they should be able to take this down. Leona as well. Actually, I don't think they have they the damage the just yet. They're going to take the wave. And that's very, very good for them. Three people down towards Balling. But Saints, yet again, get the beautiful trade one for one in this Varus now. Is going to be very, very strong. I love the game sense on the Saints to recognize, like, hey, we, we like you said, no, we could go for this kill, but then you look in the mini map, you realize, oh, there's three guys here. Whether or not they saw them, they felt something was off and they didn't want to push their luck because at the end of the day, that was an engagement onto them. They walked out alive and with a the kill. They're already coming out on top of Flocon, maybe Good. in a little bit of pressure flying over that wall. A lot of wall traversal <laughs> in the league these days, just <laughs> yeah. noticing, but it used to be a privilege. Now it seems to be a right that everybody can just kind of coast along, but now, 
as things are settling down a little bit more. 10 total kills on the field, six towards the Saints side. Wondering what either of these teams wants to do to maintain the advantage or alleviate the disadvantage they have. I feel like no team here is really disadvantaged. Uh, I feel like the game plan for uh, Converse University, while they weren't able to execute it flawlessly, they weren't disrupted, which allows them to stale, uh, still play in this game. Uh, bottom side, Leona putting a warrant into the dragon, seeing that it's up. A nice arrow's gonna land. Allowing them to see a little bit further in. There's also a little bit of action going on in the middle lane, but bottom side, they're still pressuring each other. Arrows using the armor, and now they get that blue ward down. They see exactly what's there, but I don't think they saw the Ivern. Do they know he's here? Now they do. Daisy makes her debut. Maddie, so tanky, is going to be able to front line here. But oh, find the way to the block line. League is in pressure, oh, but no, they all come down. Jin sets the stage. One shotting, trying to look for something. Not going to find anything. Flocon taking out the Leona. Huge mom call. It's going to be a lot of damage. Ego trying to fight for his life, but Maddie's going to take him down. They're all still alive. Oh. Huge fireball gonna devastate the back line, force them all to retreat. Flocon, so, so devastating in this smolder pick They're right chasing now. Them. Chasing, they no, don't want to press the pressure way too much here. They take what they can get. Again, the Saints, they're being played into and they're finding things as a result and they don't push the issue. They take what they can get, they leave, get the dragon and the tower. What more could you ask for, Theo? That's a mega fight for the Saints. Uh, two, they killed two there and they force them back so much. It's gonna be the second dragon take for the Saints and it's gonna be a very, very good soul now. Let's have a look what it is. It's gonna be Mountain Soul, which would be insane on their team comp. They have the tanky Greg, it's the tanky Skarner and the tanky Rel. If they're able to get that soul, mm. this game is gonna be very, very close to over now. They have almost a 4,000 gold lead. Varus went for that uh, Hubris first item and it's just stacked up infinite AD on that last team fight it's gonna have that second item very very soon he's gonna be doing immense damage you can see how much damage just that one Q with that one item is right there <laughs> dodges that W but I think after this cannon he's gonna have that second item in the base and that's when Saints are really going to take uh -oh. fights as the Gragas beautiful combo from Ricky LaFur they should be able to pick up this Jin. yes there is the pick still there's gonna be the Rift Herald now taken by the Saints as Ricky finds a huge pick for them and gives them more golden pocket and Maddie just living up to his name I'm not sure if Maddie means what I think it does, but I'll just go ahead and say Maddie means devastator of ADCs as he runs them down, pins them down, and just lives up to the uh, the execution required for this Skarner pick. He does what they need him to do, and he does it well. Isolates the ADC, gets a free kill, and I just wanted to point out a little bit before <laughs> that crazy fight bottom side. Prior to that, the net worth this difference was I think 1k. It was After that bottom side, it was about 3k. Um, and now it's even wider, but let's take a look at exactly what happened in that crazy bottom fight just a bit ago. As we can see all of that pressure coming up. Miracle with the huge save. League was in a lot of trouble, but then they kind of quarter it off, sectioned off, and then a lot of damage. Everyone that needs to be in the back line is in the back yeah. line doing back line things, and everybody who should be on the front line on the side of Converse is in the back line or dead. So that allows the rest of the Saints to just roll them down, displace, disrupt, and do a lot of damage, totally destroy them. Renekton was a strong force there, but he just wasn't able to get the early game advantage to be that threat that they need him to be. Oh, and Ricky, Ricky looking for solo kill, but Maddie is up on his way towards this top, and I think this Corky is as good as that. He doesn't have the flash just yet, so just a few more seconds of a cooldown. Maddie will pick that one up, and yet again, Ricky sets up the kill there. Another great play by the Saints, the top laners. Now, the Rift Herald is going to get spawned up in this top lane. They should be able to take this top to one and nobody from the side of Converse other than the Gragas is answering the, up there in the top lane so I think Saints are gonna look to keep going up there and the Converse definitely need to commit at least the iron there to protect this one the charge coming through from Maddie he will just get onto the target to, and get out from looking things Daisy does get spawned in here but Saints should be able to make their way out of here as they take all the outer tier ones Theo, I remember a time when we were losing this game. Now look at it. What's happening? What good. happened? The Saints just got fought into and then they return the favor and get a lot of kills. But here we see Phantom Star on the prowl. Might run into something he doesn't want to see overside in his jungle with his Jin not too far behind. Corky as well, but nothing's really going to come from this. They're going to get out of here. 
not going to cause any trouble. Um, but the Saints, like I was just saying, they had so many fights that were taken into them, and they come out on top somehow, and they don't push the issue. If, and if they did push it, they would have ended up getting burned. So Saints are playing very disciplined, which is pretty surprising considering they have two new players, right? And they're still playing so reserved and calculated. Usually it's the new guys, especially when they're playing mid and ADC, yeah. where you see those ego plays, those cocky attitudes and um, not playing properly. But it seems that Alonzo runs a tight ship over there. Yeah, I mean, and they're building well as well. Bear is going for that uh, item second. He's going to have that shield break uh, against that Ivern, which is so, so... Uh, valuable in uh, such a team comp. So Serpent's Fang is going to be a very, very good pickup for him. He's going to be doing immense damage. As Saints are very, very tanky here with that Mountain Dragon spawning in 50 seconds. I think that's going to be the next big objective, but I don't even think Converse can ever Ooh. fight that. Ricky's going to take a little bit of a trade there. Can't really solo kill Ego uh, just at this point in the game. Doesn't have the damage uh, the Merc treads on the Converse top player. Makes it really hard, but he can definitely take some good trades here. He gets the level up from Royce. So he's going to be level 14 in this next team fighting he should be next to unkillable as on those two items he's gonna be looking very very strong you can see saints have so much pressure on the map up in the top and corky is pushing out the wave but smolder on two items now gonna become so so scary probably very close if doesn't have already those stacks and it looks like Richie. saints might look for a dive here they're gonna get at least this tier two turret and these demolish procs have been procced so many times by the saints here they take the tier two they're gonna make their way over to the dragon and i don't think converse have any chance of fighting this one well you can't forget <laughs> it's not just objective space that's being uh, given to the saints they're getting a lot of gold from these tower kills and they're just walking through and scooping them up thinly for the dragon they're gonna be getting an objective advantage and they're also gonna be getting a nice fat chunk of Gold, which is going to be widening this gap even further. Now it's a 6k deficit. Converse University is facing. That's about a whole item alone on the ADC difference, but it's going to be a, a little bit more spread out than that. Everybody on the side of the Saints has been facing a lot of action and doing well with it. But as it comes to a head here, these next few, if not, I feel like this next fight on its own is more or less going to dictate how this game goes. If the Saints Absolutely. win this next fight, I feel like the game might just be over. Whereas yeah. Converse, uh, I think if they win this one, then they definitely have a path to victory. This is going to be barren or nothing for either of these teams. And I think it's uh, I think it's just oh. shaping up to that. Are they going to go for something creative? They're just hiding the what? push, waiting for it. They find Miracle, not the guy that they were waiting for. Can if they were a little more patient, they could have gotten Floak on, but they're going to get Miracle taken down. A lot of damage they're going to eat for it Ooh, as well. The ultimate, though. Stage has been set, stunning up Flocon, but the rest of the team is here. Maddie charging through, almost finding a huge stun, but Maddie still frontlining, doing a lot for the Saints, opening it up. Ego is coming from the back line, and he's taking a lot of damage. Phantom Star as well going in. They're going to take down the Leona, but the Varys Ego. Here. Varys looking for some damage. Ego running for his life so low. Arrows coming for the slow. He's going to be able to flash up. Maddie charging him down, though. Ricky with a huge kill coming up. Maddie trying to get the follow up. Can he throw one more barrel? It's all oh, the flash. Don't even need it. Link is going to take that kill off to the Dead. Ivern, chasing him down. Can he find this? Can he find two? Can he find even more than that? Running through. Barrel's going to slow oh. him down, taking a lot of damage. Ricky might go down. This Ego still chasing him down, but they're going to find the Jin. It's not even going to matter. The Barrel almost found the mark. He almost not only got the kill, but he's still going to come out alive. Phantom Star respawning now. Not going to be able to do too much, actually. Hold on. Fighting the stun, but Ricky's still here. And your team is in the area. Yes, sir. Maddie looking to just be a little bit of a Oh, Reinforce Rill's dead, Rill's dead. Oh, God, oh, no, 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 okay. Phantom Star is still going to come out on top here. Not going to go down for it. I really feel like they could have collapsed, but they didn't want to take the risk. People are respawning. They could have been behind them. What a game. I mean, the fact that Smolder died there looked disastrous for the Saints, but then Lig came in. He's super fed, does so much damage. All flashes now burned for Woo. both sides. Nobody's going to flash up except except Miracle for this next team fight, and he's going to be the difference maker in this next fight for sure. If they can get a good uh, Rel ultimate alongside that Smolder ultimate, they're going to completely destroy Converse. So that first pick of the fight gave Converse a chance, but Saints just have too much money in their pockets. They run them down, they take them down, and now with Soul spawning two and a half minutes, it's going to be hard for Converse to get back into this game. Yeah, their pockets have been thoroughly run, as you can see, the net worth. <laughs> difference between St. Clair and Converse University. This gap is only getting wider. I, I, I'll admit, I apologize to the ladies and gentlemen.
Oh man, at home, I told you that a Baron would be taken. No Baron was taken because oh, yeah. they were too busy chasing down uh, Converse University, you know, running them back to their base. But now we're just kind of recentering back over to the Baron pit. We're seeing Skarner and uh, Marish coming up from the sidelines looking to get something. Maddie going to miss a charge, but Zav is in a lot there of trouble is. taking down the Ivor. Jin dies too. Yeah, then we're going to see Jin going down. Double kill for the Varus. That's exactly what you want to see. Ricky. Oh, Ricky, come on, Ricky. You're better than that. Still going to line up for a triple kill for this new guy in town. League taking down a lot of Converse University. And every second that goes by, the net worth gap becomes not only wider, but a lot scarier to deal with for Converse University. And this is going to be a Baron pickup. No grand crazy fight's going to happen around it. They're just going to be able to take it thanks to the work that they put in just a bit ago. Yeah, and that was a great pick by Miracle. As I stated, having that flash up, picks up the Ivor and immediately the flashes onto the Jin. That's it for Converse. They can't do anything about that one. Baron's going to be taken, soul spawning in a minute, 12 second scenes. Going to reset, going to buy up those items. See Smolder on three items, Varus on three items. Uh, Ricky has that Hourglass. If uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard, if he does get in trouble, can go invulnerable. So, oh, he, Saint, has he has Hourglass? Yeah, <laughs> well, he has a starting item, but okay, like, okay. He, he got it, he got it. And, um, Let's go back into replay, into that team fight. Varus was able to get a triple kill, so let's see how all of that went down before this uh, dragon fight. You can see Miracle finally engage on to the Ivern. They take him down immediately. Maddie on the other side, missing the ult on the Jin, but Mad Miracle <laughs> does flash in to follow that up. There goes the second kill to the ADC. Ricky misses the ultimate, but lands the E. The Varus ult comes out. They are able to pick that one up as well. Clean triple kill. There's a bit of trouble here in the bot lane. Smaller does get caught out, does get sent up by the Leona ult, but it's just so, so uh -oh. tanky. Looking to solo kill this Renekton as Fulcon oh is just a beast. One E away from that kill. It's going to go right in onto that Leona. Is able to stay alive, but can the Saints find the chase down the turret? Does go down. It's 1v4 for Fulcon here. Definitely going to be going down here to that Ignite. One more Korkiraki does the job, but look at Rick <laughs> on the flip side of the map, he doesn't care too much about this dragon. He's looking to win the game. As you can see, all of Converse are actually basing to defend against Ricky. Now Saints Jeez. can flip the map again, go towards that dragon. If they're able to pick up that soul, this game is going to be very hard for Converse to come back in. I don't care, guys. I want to I want to end the game right now. Ricky's just hitting the building. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, it's devastating. They get the grab on Phantom Star. Leona not able to cast a single spell here. Going to get a knockup, but it's not going to matter. Daisy's about to go down. It's going to be a huge gold swing and your Ivern basically useless for the rest of this engagement now oh what the hell they're fighting corky running for his life can they see him do they do anything they don't care all right fine they just, want his, all right. they just want the dragon <laughs> that's all they care about right yeah. corky who cares he's just level 15 he's not even a, a big threat this game and honestly i don't even feel like that's an inaccurate statement yeah. corky uh, i feel like hasn't been able to have a huge impact that game but just as it occurred to me a little bit ago we saw the death of Locon. i feel like there we saw that one instance of a uh, new guy confidence I mean, you know not really because he knew Ricky was up in the top lane. He was Fair. just absorbing pressure just a little bit too much, but I don't think it's a ter terrible play. And Converse did use a lot for their Renekton and Ivor yeah, were both down in that ball lane. Yeah. They wanted to take him down badly, and he was able to stall out for a long enough time to the point where he forced Renekton to leave, and then he died afterwards. But Ricky now has the Robidon's death cap off of that gold. He just gained the top lane. He's going to be absolutely monstrous as his next fight. 17 is his level way above anybody on Converse. Corky is on level 16, but he's just not able to do enough damage, and the Saints with this mountain soul are going to be practically unkillable at this point. Absolutely, Ricky. The bastion of the Saints team, as usual, but League also, of course, a huge, huge, huge part of their success. Able to find all those arrows, perfectly lining them up as this comes to a head. We're seeing all the spells committed. Maddie just absorbing everything. Oh, a huge root. Gonna find League on the back line, but Ricky just absorbing all the attention. He doesn't even care. He's just taking and Daisy's gonna come through. Oh, a huge pull together. We're gonna see Ego get grabbed and it's gonna be able to pour all the damage it can oh. into him. But Flocon with a nice fireball takes him down. Now the Saints are able to turn their attention to more important matters, such as winning the game. Able to focus down the turrets one by one now. Coming through, there's not a lot of resistance there. There's oh, no protection in the front line. See there's ya. the Hope one gone. There is no hope anymore. Your base is falling before the Saints. And as each building goes down, Maddie. Just, uh, he's like a sun to a solar system. They're orbiting around him, but they have no effect. 
just going to be focusing these buildings on one by That's one. It. But this game is as good as done for Converse University. The Saints were able to turn things around from a pretty rocky early game and turn it into a very dominant victory. 22 to 8 in only 29 minutes. Saints are looking so strong. It's a great start to the season for them. Playing against a very strong team in Converse and just kind of with a bit of a shaky start even. Looking very strong for most of that game. They were better on the macro. They got more turrets. Those demolished procs that the Smoker was able to get through those mid games gave her those extra plates and was just able to get so, so fed. Varus got fed on the balling. Saints played around that balling, but their top side of the map. Had, uh, had an outstanding game. Both the Scorner and Gragas found so much value. So it was just a great team play from the Saints. They find the win there, and they put, on, put themselves on match point. Yeah, absolutely. The Saints, like I said, they kind of turned things around. It was not a guaranteed thing from the starting of this game. I think it was 0-3 uh, It was not good for a very long time before the Saints were able to slowly start turning things around. And then from there, Converse weren't able to get more than five yeah. after that early game, right? Just uh, 20, 21, 22 to 8 uh, at the end of that game. But still, the Saints were able to pick it up and make sure that they didn't leave any scraps to be picked up. They didn't litter because they knew they were going to get taxed and fined by the Converse University Police for every scrap left yeah. out of place. But the Saints were able to keep things tidy, make sure they were at their 100%, you know, nice and buttoned up. They're not going to get in trouble. And... Well, what's Converse University going to do? Their Renekton relies on a huge early game lead. And while they had that for a little bit, it wasn't on him. It was on that bottom side that was still able to get recovered by Maddie. But at the end of the day, Saints were able to recover and do so in a way that didn't even make it look like they were recovering. Look like they were winning the entire game when that was definitely not the case. But a fantastic game one. And before we head into game two, any last thoughts uh, about what the Saints might be thinking or what Converse might I be? I mean, Saints are definitely happy with their draft. Um... A bit of a shaky early game, but I think overall their macro is good. So I think they're going to look to play towards a similar game plan. If uh, Converse wants to first pick Renekton, I think they're going to be very glad to do so. You could see how much yeah. more value the Gragas got there that game. So I think Saints are very happy on Converse. Definitely, I think, will switch up their draft in this game too. Absolutely. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after a quick break. Don't go anywhere because game two is probably going to be a little crazier than that last one. But we'll see you guys very soon.
Welcome back, everybody, to game two between the St. Clair Saints and the Converse University Saints. Able to come out on top in game one with a pretty dominant performance. Now they're going to be on a blue side again from the look of things. And the bands are Rumble, Huey, and Maokai looking similar to last game. Converse going to switch it up. They're going to get rid of that Varus, but still the Ziggs <laughs> and Lilia stay as Saints have the first pick. Yeah, uh, banning out that Varus, they don't want to deal with uh, League on that guy again, but now it's a blank canvas meant to be painted. It's its destiny. What's the first pick going to be for the Saints? I mean, the stage is theirs. I feel like they could go for anything here. And Smolder again. That's always a solid well. lead. Yeah, I was thinking, who did they pick first in the last game? Well, there it is. There it is once again. See the counter picks coming out. Are they going to lead with Ivern once again? I remember that one. That was their first pick. Ivern into Renekton. Yeah. Uh, I mean, both of those are available. I don't know if they feel like the Ivern worked out well for them. I, I mean... <laughs> they're, they're hovering it, so maybe they feel comfortable going for it again, but I feel like they want something with a little bit more impact, like like actual impact impact, like stuns and kind of stuff impact, but if they feel like they can make something happen with this Ivern again, obviously... It's a good pick, and that's what they're going to go for once again. Are they going to follow it up with a top lane pick? See if they can section off at that side of the map. Let's see. I don't know how much value the Cypher is going to get. It's going to be the WC, and they're going to go for the Corky again. I do not like this from Converse. This They just tried this. And it didn't work, but I think they have a plan. I think they're just upset with how they played. They had the mm. early game lead, yeah, which is exactly sure. what they wanted with their comp, but they kind of fell apart in a few fights. So they're going to look not to do the same thing. They're going to be running back a similar style draft. I think Saints are going to go for the misfortune here. <laughs> Wide open. Was banned out last time. I know League plays that one. So it would be a very, very strong pickup here in the balling, but uh, I'm not too sure what Saints are going to go with. And I think Rel as well. They could pick that one early. Miracle, just always so good on that champion. There it is, Hovered. I think they're going to instantly pick that one up. They want to slip that one away. As the Rel mm -hmm. should be getting locked in here in just a second. Yep, there it is. And uh, I wonder if they're going to match up the balling here or if they're going to just pick their jungle into the Ivern. I feel like the approach from Converse this time around might be to go for a similar lineup, but just spread out the uh, agency on uh, this side. I feel like in that last game, all the agency to play was on that Renekton, and he wasn't able to get his game too well. What? Oh my god. I goodness. looked away from the TV for one second. I look back, I see Nulu and Willump on my screen. What? That is a interesting pickup. I was not expecting that at all. I had no idea. Maddie had this in his arsenal. If it is even Maddie on the new, no, could, Who knows? Could, could go mid lane. I don't, I don't know. They could cook up something devious, but they're looking to go for the Ezreal in the balling for a set of Converse. A very strong pick into the Nunu can dodge that snowball uh, pretty well with uh, that E. So uh, the double ADC on side of Converse uh, with the Corky and Ezreal. Ivan, they're going to have a lot of poke this game. They tried to do that with the Jin, but I think. The Ezreal is going to be more effective. You can see they're banning out the Ash, the Misfortune, Leona banned out from the side of the Saints. Let's look, what else do they want to take off of the board here? I don't really know what ADC 
St. Clair is going to go for here. A lot of them are banned out. Ziggs, Varus, Ash, Misfortune, and Ezreal are out of the picture. I don't think the Smolder would be going bot lane. Uh, just too strong in the mid lane. Needs that farm solo XP. Too strong on the Smolder to put in the bot lane. Alistar can be banned away from the side of the Saints as Converse have their fourth pick. Interesting ban. I like it. I feel like it kind of goes to show um, maybe we are thinking on the same wavelength I in the league team. They don't want to give Converse pike. easy options to disrupt their lineup oh on goodness. the side of the Saints, but they are going to lock in that Pike pick, That's... which, if we're talking disruption, pretty disruptive if you just lose one of your characters outright. I mean, Pike's not a champion you see too often at the high level of play, and usually not something you'd see with an Ezreal, but Converse feel like they need something else from what they had last game, and Pike is going to be that mega engage, uh, all or nothing assassin mm -hmm. on support, so... It's a definitely interesting pick, Callista. I like that, Callista. Very, very good pick here into both Azriel and Pike. Very strong in the early game. Alongside that rel, they can look for that 2v2. So, um, Callista is going to be picked up for the Saints. Ricky now will be blinding the top laner here. Olaf is open. Um, Olaf might be pretty good into this team comp. Into that Ivern, into the ADCs, can just run through everybody. But blind picking it is a bit dangerous. Um, I don't really know what else he could pick here. Can't just blind Darius in this position. I don't think it's too good. Could run back the Gragas, but I think they need maybe the 80 damage or Nekton <laughs> is going to be the play. Um, it's a strong laner. He'll be fine in lane. Let's see what Converse decide to do on the counter. I feel like the thing that's so scary about Ricky is... And I'll kind of get into this a little bit more when we're talking about the draft, but we're going to see the last pick with the Cassante, and that kind of lines up everything. And now the point I was just about to make, and you can see it especially in that first game, is there's a difference between needing to win your lane versus being okay with going even or just having nothing happen versus losing your lane. And I feel like the thing with Ricky is no matter what happens, no matter what champion he's playing, it's a lose situation for the enemy team. Either Ricky wins his lane because you're not sending any resources to disrupt them. And obviously that's terrible because now you're going to have a fed Renekton. Either trades, which is great because even situations, he's still going to be able to play as if he won his lane. And if he loses his lanes because you committed too much and the other lanes that you have suffer. So, Putting Renekton in Ricky's hands makes it so that no matter what, it's a great situation for the Renekton to kind of run away with the game. Yeah, absolutely. It's a interesting draft from the Saints. The Nunu is definitely going to be the big uh, shining ball of this game. <laughs> that's, the, that's the pick here that is going to either make or break this game for the Saints. Converse have one of those as well with the Pike, but I think Nunu is a bit of, a, bit of a bigger kind of snowball no pun intended. Nah, Don't pun see that intended. one coming pun intended. too often. But, I mean, Maddie on the Nunu, it's going to be interesting. I wonder if he's going to go for that tank build or the AP. If I had to guess, definitely going to be going for the tank. But mm -hmm. I have no idea. If you're picking Nunu at this point, you, you're willing to go to some interesting depths. Yeah, I mean, if anything, like I mentioned before, the, the value of disruption brings as well. A Nunu being able to stun up and cause a lot of chaos in a team fight is super valuable. When I look at the side of Converse University, they have... I'm not sure what allows you to do that much, uh, you know, disruption and chaos and CC. The side of the Saints is pretty straightforward. And Callista, that champion reeks of consistency to me. No matter what happens, as long as you don't get your lane crushed, you're going to be happy. And that's the thing. If you have to win your lanes, like uh, Converse had to win their lanes in the last game, they still ended up losing. Um, you're not very comfortable. Saints don't have to win any of their lanes. And regardless... They're going to be comfortable walking away from the laning phase and going to the mid stages, being able to play with their giant brains uh, macroing around yeah. the map. And that's something that you're always comfortable doing and you want to make sure you're setting yourself up for as much success as possible. I think that draft kind of uh, accomplishes that. Yeah, I mean, you saw last game Saints uh, kind of fell apart in the laning phase, but as soon as a team fight happened, they find a pick here, find a pick there, and in those 5v5s, they just looked way more dominant. They were able to get a lot of gold around the map without even needing to fight just mm -hmm. from pure macro. Sure, they'll sacrifice a little bit on one side, but get two times more on the other. So they're definitely going to be looking to continue that game plan. If you can just out macro the enemy team, it doesn't matter about the lane matchup, doesn't matter about anything. If you're taking the enemy base and they're not taking yours, you're going to win the game.
Yeah, and before we head into this next and potentially final game of the series, just to wrap up, like I said, um, Converse University, they spread out the agency on their team a little bit. Last game, they had to win the top lane, and honestly, they didn't. And I think that's why, kind yeah. of why they ended up crumbling there. But now, anybody on their team can kind of run away with the game and take initiative, especially the Cassante, um, especially um, the Corky in the mid lane, played very well in that first. So if he's able to kind of get things started for their team, things to go looking very comfortable. But again, the side of the Saints, they have that wild card pick with the Nunu. Um, and of course, Ricky on that Renekton, a very scary thing to see. And one way or the other, Converse is going to have to answer it. And hopefully they don't answer it uh, too harshly or they could sacrifice some of their other lanes. But ladies and gentlemen, as we send things off to a break, I hope you take this opportunity to get your socks, <laughs> double them up, because uh, your blood might run cold with the fear of what the Saints are going to be bringing to this game too. See you guys very soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are once again. The stars have aligned for St. Clair College and Converse University to conflict on the Summoner's Rift once again. Here we are with a fresh slate, nothing on our backs. Welcome that previous game Rift. washed away to the sands of history. But uh -oh. can it be repeated as we see a huge stack from Converse University coming to us? Callista did not walk up. Pink to go there, but just didn't. The early ward's gonna come out there from Converse to get a little bit of info. This gives Saints um, some roof, some room to maybe place a ward deep in uh, the Converse jungle, but it doesn't look like Saints are gonna go for it. They have no idea where Converse are. Don't just want to give away a first blood for nothing. So Saints gonna be playing it passively. Looks like a five stack coming up from Converse, walking to the top lane Minions slash mid them. lane. They want to get a early level one fight here, but finally they're gonna split up as the bot lane's gonna walk to the bot. Ivern does not need any 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 leash on any of his camps as Smolder will place a ward on Raptors here. Ivern this time gonna path from top to bottom so well. Maddie, you could see Converse definitely switching this up and yet again on the level one, St. Clair looking to find a good trade in mid lane, but actually Converse's mid laner, Darkman, nice trade for him that level one is he's gonna have the early HP advantage. Yeah, and we saw the exact same setup from that first game repeated here. So maybe uh, stains of game one not completely washed away, but things are still relatively slow. Ricky on that Renekton. I feel like last time I saw Ricky on Renekton, he kind of got rolled. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get rolled this time around, but hopefully. Uh, he's having Cassandra oh. running with game. But Miracle hey. getting pulled back in. And uh, gonna be eating that Ignite. Still gonna be healthy enough to have impact down here. Both junglers passing to the bottom side. Miracle needing to play a little bit more cautiously now with that HP pool so low, but things are still relatively calm. The ADCs even on the CS, mid laners, everything's even, but this time actually Ricky is going to have the CS advantage. Oh, Hike looking for Hulk, misses the Hulk, and can they find the kill onto the Ezreal? They get the E out, the Ignite comes out, Pike has to be careful here, does get the stun, Miracle does not have the flash, uh -oh. will, he be able to be, will he be able to stay alive? Yes he does, the flash oh. comes out from the Ezreal, but can the Callista find anything here? I don't think she has a ward to put into that bush, so it's going to back up, it's going to be first blood for Converse yet again. And now we're seeing uh, the Converse University. Their efforts are not in vain. Just seeing how they played that first, you know, zero seconds of the match just coming out of their base. Oh, Ricky, Dash to getting pulled into the tower, taking a lot of heat. Ego hitting, slowing, causing a lot of pressure for Ricky, but he has the stacks up ready to go. Flash. He's going to be able to get out committing the flash. That's one resource down, but he's still alive and still walking thanks to it. Going to go in, go for the stun, get a lot of life steal, and going to get out just keeping Ego at a nice low HP just to make sure his Ego doesn't get a little too high. And uh, now it's going to allow everybody to get a little bit of up on this top side, but I feel like the next change is going to be a little bit more explosive. Bottom side, we're going to see Ivor making his way down over. Maddie's also here. He's level three. Ready to get something started. Miracle coming up from the jungle side. He's not going to reach it into Zav. There's no flash. pressure. Duckman kind of inclined to get something going, but nothing is going to land there. Zav is going to be forced to flash out, but we're going to see Phantom Star coming from behind. Going to be some commitments coming out. Ivor can die. Looking for something. Ivor's in a lot of trouble. That's League's going to get that kill. Spear stacking up. Duckman. Oh. Man, coming from the left, Banistar and Hope coming from the right, getting pincered, but they're going to be able to pull Miracle in once again. Maddie good. stunning up the Corky, oh, going back in once again, getting that stun. Phantom Star so low, but he has that white health. Miracle is going to go down. Hope one coming across that wall. Uh, Flocon so low as well, just kiting, but it's going to go down. They're going to trade mid laners. Maddie running for his life, league so low. He has both buffs, though, so if he gets out of this, he's going to be in pretty good shape. Maddie so low. He's going to go waiting in the bush, see if he can find something. Playing very oh. greedily. He's He's gonna suffer for it. Hope one takes him down. That's gonna be a basically a wipe for everybody that was there. But Saints definitely not liking what's happening. Yeah, right that's now. a tragedy for the Saints. You know, if Lig maybe lived with those double buffs, it would have been good for the laning phase. But now the Ezreal 301 gonna have those double buffs in the ball lane. It's just stacking up that tier. It's an amazing start for Converse yet again. And I think they have an even bigger lead than they had last time. You can see the Smolder gonna walk straight into this Ivern, but we'll be able to get out with his life. Should they out that pink ward, but you can see the vision for Converse all over that river. They have those wards down, so definitely playing well in the second game. And you can see around this bot lane, they've definitely been stronger in these early skirmishes. Yeah, and we're seeing the lingering effects from all of those early skirmishes taking place. The Saints still playing in uniform. 
but um, nobody, in fact, quite the contrast from that first game. We're not seeing a lot of support rotations towards mid or top side. Everyone's kind of just sticking where they belong, staying in their lanes, but now we're seeing a bit of a pseudo invasion coming to that jungle. Ricky also kind of trading up in the top side, bottom side, facing a bit of pressure. A league with that red buff, having a little bit of extra damage. Maybe they want to steal it from him, do something about it. Hope one with both, actually. Miracle getting pulled in. League trying to retaliate, but Miracle solo already. Hope one Look taking a lot of pressure from League, pushing him That's back. Just one Amarado. more should be good. One more, just one oh. more. Not able to find it before he gets taken down. Corky devastating in the mid lane as well. Miracle a... getting devastated in the bottom side, but he's going to be able to escape. Not going to go down quite yet. Still suffering as his ADC went down once again. It's 1-2-1. One, one. And all the Ezreal sitting nice and pretty with a 3-0-2 oh, in that bottom side. I thought he definitely had the kill there, but didn't have enough spears inside of Hope to take him down there. Another just unfortunate turn of events for the Saints as they're down 2k gold in just 6 minutes. Dragon as well. Ricky has to be careful in the top and does pop the ultimate. Ego will find the knockback, gonna flash ultimate. Ricky does have the aggro, will get taken down to 1 HP. Can he make it out alive? No, he won't be able to. Does go down and Saints are dropping like flies. Converse now looking like the team that's completely stopping. They're gonna trade the Dragon for the Grubs. Saints only hope at this point is this smolder in the mid lane. Get this smolder fed and that's basically your only way to a victory at this point. I feel like I feel like Converse definitely felt that first game and realized, hold on, we gotta wake up a little bit, guys. We can't be playing like this. You seen that picture of the guy like sitting in his chair and then he, he slightly sits leans up. forward? That's the like that. guy. Yeah, they're locking in right now, but bottom side, League Miracle. Dynamic duo on the bottom side, always looking for those aggressive plays, but Converse University aware of it, playing around that fact. Oh, Wokon just gonna devastate this wave, priming up those stacks. Gonna see that reach in the bottom side. Ezreal's gonna be left alone, but he left his own devices. He's still a bit of a problem, and I really like this Ezreal pick from that draft. Just yeah. the opposite of Jin, self-sufficient, able to maneuver, fight pretty comfortably. He's not stuck in one place. Ezreal's just so much more comfortable to take fights with, and I'm sure Hope One's probably a lot more comfortable playing this champion as well. At least based off of the performance we're seeing so far, he looks more comfortable than he was on that Jin. Yeah, absolutely. In this top lane now, Bramble picked up by Ego alongside that chain. Best Ricky's gonna be doing absolutely zero damage to this Cassante. We'll still look for a trade, but not many trades are good for the next at this point in the game. He's just trying to get the crash in, but look how much damage he's taking. Doesn't have the ultimate. He gets hit by the knockup. Ricky getting way too confident there. Will get solo killed again. It's just looking like a disaster for the Saints. They're running in one by one and dropping like flies. Still only down two and a half thousand gold, but this XP level lead is going to be massive for Sada Connors. And this game is looking in a very, very good spot for them. But as I say, that engage goes on onto it. These Ezreal, he has the flash. Maddie does try and follow up. Blake dodges the hook there. Can they pick they up the pike at least? Shutdowns on both of the bot laners. No, nobody dies. Converse get up with their life, but hope forced to flash. Lig though, trying to follow up with the flash and just was not able to get it. A pretty even trade there for both sides considering the jungle of the Saints was in the ball lane. And seeing some uh, more action in the mid lane, Flocon and this Corky Duckman PH just trading back and forth so consistently. He's just farming the stacks. But oh, what another fight. initiation! Miracle getting that knock. Oh, it's gonna go down immediately. Like, Daisy's here, causing some mayhem. But Miracle frontline. He's gonna frontline himself into an early grave. But Maddie and he rolling the, the snowball of all snowballs. What? It's gonna go up. He flashed for that. Ivern using that flash, but they're gonna find that kill onto the. Uh, Pike and League is gonna fall in the result of all of that chaos and Ivor is actually gonna get out alive. I thought he was as good as dead. Yeah, I mean overall it's pretty good for the Saints. Maddie did pick up that second shutdown, but a couple of shutdowns going with the Saints and this Ivern. It's going to be able to stay alive, it will be able to full crew those caps, they didn't take him down, that would have been absolutely massive, but Fulcon just a little bit too late, moving from the mid lane, could not find that pick there. You can see Ricky, even though he is 0-0, down a jillion bazillion, he's still trying to fight back here, he's going to use that ultimate, the knockup from Ego is ready, Ricky does not able to dodge that one, can he find another good trade here, under the turret, Ego still has that ultimate, Ricky down a full level there in the top lane, still trying to push that wave in at all times, have that top priority, which is so, so crucial. The ultimate runs out. Now it's going to be Eagle's turn to trade here. Has his ultimate ready. Ricky forced to back up. Will go for a recall here. Still, 
Saints. They're trying to get themselves back in this game. You can see Miracle looking for those Miracle engages, stunning up that Ezreal every now and then. And they're able to find him, but more times than not, they have this game as the Pike. It's going to find the hook. Miracle's going to take a nice little chunk there still. He's able to stay alive. And you can see the longer this game goes, the less uh, this Pike is going to be able to do as the Rel can just tank the hook and dodge out without really taking any real damage. And you can see how much damage this Kalista starting to do. Has that opportunity up. Ezreal has no item. This Pike goes in. He has to flash out. They're not able to follow up. But you can see in this 2v2 now, the Saints uh -oh. are looking way more stronger. Maddie is going to uh -oh. look for a snowball. Can he find the strike onto the Whoa. Ezreal? Ezreal dives away. Miracle going to go under tower. Pick up the Pike. Stuns up the Ezreal. They should get the double he kill here as Beautiful. they are able to get it. Nobody dies as well. Clean dive from the Saints as they get themselves back into this they game. They really threw it all into that one. Oh, Corky dies. Off, but we're going to find Miracle going towards Corky. League so oh. low. He's going to fall. Maddie as well. Getting chased down. Ego going to go for that slam to take down all the last survivors of that legendary bottom push. Hey, Saints all went down for definitely what they were not what they were looking for, but at least they got something beforehand. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. They forced out a TP onto the balling from Ego and his flash. Ricky was able to get a plate up top. They still got those two kills in the balling, which was so, so crucial. So all five members from Converse towards that balling. In the meantime, the Smolder and the Renekton were just free farming. And the fact the Saints even got a couple kills there was amazing. Uh -oh. But Ricky is caught up in a bit of a pickle here. Will get hit by that Q from the Ivern, but he's not really scared. He knows his no team ball. is coming here to back him up. Pike oh. gonna miss that hook onto Smolder. That's a great start to the fight for the Saints. Daisy is gonna be down. I don't think Converse can fight these uh, grubs. I think they should just look together. But it looks like Callista is down in the ball and for the Saints. So Converse will have the number advantage. I don't think Saints are gonna be looking to fight this one in the 4 5 scenario. They might just take the second dragon and give up these grubs as I think the flip map is in full effect. You see the Smolder gonna get another plate with that demolish. Able to do that so well in these past few games. They're able to find the Cassante. Do they have the damage to kill them? Absolutely not. The Callista is on her way here. Maddie has to be careful here. Isn't a lot of danger. Doesn't have ult, doesn't have flash. Is able to dodge the knockout. Teleport coming out from Ricky Lafer. Can he find the stun onto Crucial Member? He's gonna get one shot. Not in a great position there. Can he find it onto Corky? Does find the stun. Is a follow up there from the rest oh. of the team. One HP. Nice little strike there coming out. Smaller ult onto Oh my god! Nobody falls down. They're all on one HP. If Smoter had that executed already, would have been a couple kills there. But you can see Converse playing on the tippy toes here, all on one HP. We'll be able to stay alive, find a couple picks. But you can see how close these team fights are, even when oh. Sinclair at our deficit. Absolutely devastating. The Saints were so close in so many different situations there. I gotta say, right while well, it's at the top of my head. Huge props to Ricky. That was brave as hell, and he went for it. He was even he even said he's gonna get one shot here, and he was getting one shot, and he kept pressing onwards. But still, the rest of the team, Maddie with those huge snowballs, Ego was so close. I think I think at that moment though, uh, Ego was spelling and potentially when he got hit by that snowball. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, he was like immune, it, yeah. yeah, didn't have any effect on him, and he walked away with just one HP. It's so devastating, and that huge call from uh, Flocon with yeah. uh, with the ultimate. Oh. It devastated so much of that line, but just not devastating enough. Saints are at least going to get the dragon, but let's take a look at exactly what happened in that huge fight from the Saints side. Looking at it going again, Ricky charging through all five of them, facing so much pressure. Miracle doing such a great amount of work. League putting down all those spears as much as they can. That huge call doing so much damage, but Ivern. the disruption just not enough. Ivern playing so well. The rest of Converse University just kiting so perfectly. Ricky committing a little too much. And they're forced to retreat from there. Yeah, and uh, now Saints still not out of this game, but that's definitely a hit. A surprise, they're only down 2,000 gold that's considering they're yeah. down nine kills. They get the first hurt. The Smolder still getting those stacks up, but this this game, Corky does have a good amount of oh. gold on him. He has that Trinity Force already. Matty actually gonna go for that Leandri's first item, not going for the tank variation. That hook uh, somehow Huge. missed the elevation. Is not uh, correct there. So Nunu's not gonna be hit by that one. And, Looking to get out, but this Pike has that Umbreal Glaive. The wards are definitely going to be on the side of Converse's League. Takes a lot of damage there. Half his HP. Finally, the first Demolish Brock, it seems like, for this Corky, who has just been... Uh, doesn't have too much pressure in the melee. Lick! Oh my down God. to one HP. Can the Saints find any fall up here? No, Lick just going to burn his cleanse for practically no reason. It's a great force there from Converse as they get a plate and a crucial summoner there from the ADC. That was just so well played coming up from both uh, sides here, but just... <laughs> 
like you mentioned, Saints so close in the net worth, surprisingly, but I just remember during that whole kerfuffle with the Grubs and the top side play, remember, yeah. uh, we had League just farming bottom, and then when things went to the other side, we just had Ricky farming top. Yeah. He TP'd in. Saints are playing the long game here. They recognize that their lineup is more suited to scaling into that late game. And they look, do scale well, yeah. Look who has the uh, EXP advantage, look who has a level advantage, uh, and the gold advantage coming up for the ADCs. It's Leaf, despite us being down in kills, down in map control, does. he's really, really dangerous right now and getting more and more dangerous by the second. Yeah, actually, the fact that he's going lethality means his items are that much cheaper. He's on two full items already, he has that Serpent's Fang, so yet again, into that Ivor and building that item is just so, so strong. Cuts down on those shields. The Rift Herald will be going over to Converse, but can they find a pick onto the spike? They do find a stun, but they don't really have too much follow-up. They're going to give the Rift for free as they look to make a play across the map. Maddie gonna go for that full clear yet again. This Cassante is gonna be so, so tanky the later this game goes. The uh, Rift Hell does go down. Ricky should know there's an Ivor near this top lane. Should not take a very extended fight here. Yeah. Will just E out. Nice trade there onto Ego. And even though he's 0 3 0, he's still gonna hold his own in this lane. He's gonna be able to clear out these waves and not let too much fall up in the top lane. He's gonna clear out that wave. And Saints have kind of brought the game, stat, uh, game state to a bit of a haul. They're not gonna be able to, uh, to lose too much off of all this pressure that Converse has been putting on. And they've been sustaining this pressure even with a, without a lead pretty well. Absolutely, and now we're seeing uh, bottom side taking a lot of pressure. They want to get rid of that tower, but we're going to see Smolder making his way to meet the Corky. Maddie constantly rolling his snowballs, and they've had a big effect. Leak trying to trade out with Ezreal, we're going to blink out of there. Now Ezreal level 9, Leak hopefully going to get to level 10 soon, just to get a little bit more potency into those spells. But that bottom tower so low. Waiting for just something to blow it over. Oh, just tossing out an ult. It's gonna do a good amount of damage. Pike coming up from the bottom side there, wrapping around into the mid, seeing if they can catch League Miracle on that backside though. Blue Wards coming out. Can they get any kind of CC on him? Not quite. He's going to escape. <laughs> Matty Snowball not gonna connect. They're gonna get to the tower in the bottom side. Still oh, slowly down there. Corky making his way up to the middle lane. Gonna be retreating now. The Saints recognizing that they might be getting a bit pincered. Ricky in the top side, he still has his TP. Yeah. So he's gonna go home, heal up, maybe get his item, and then TP back to this mid fight potentially. But we're waiting to see whether or not it's gonna be necessary if Converse University wants to keep pushing this one going forward. They're gonna use that Rift Herald. Will the Saints try to contest it, or will he just let this happen? Halfway to see Ricky to the bottom side. They're gonna take down that Rift Herald. Soon it makes one collision. This tower's still standing strong. They need to make sure they keep it up as long as they wanna fight here. Ricky's gonna make his way over. Phantom Star looking for a victim to go on. And now, they're kind of getting sneaky, pushing around from the jungle side, trying to find them. Pinching them mid. Ricky getting pushed out of the way. They Hope can't defend this. They can't. They have to let this one go. But they find Phantom Star on the bottom side. Not going to be able to get the kill. He's going to be able to get out of there. But Saints lost that tower. And unlike last time, they were all here to watch it happen. They didn't have anybody farming comfortably on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, Converse are using the lead way more, in a way better way than they did in uh, game one. They're just playing it slowly now making sure not to take any unnecessary fights, and they're just slowly overpowering the uh, say the Saints here. They have the poke with the Ezreal, with the core key, the Ivern always healing and shielding everyone up, and Pike, constant pressure. They're gonna be able to get the second dragon. It is Chemtech Soul, so it's not the end of the day, but on that Ivern, that Chemtech Soul is absolutely monstrous. It has to be careful here, Flocon. He's able to dodge out everything from Skassante, getting a nice amount of stacks as well from uh, this trade here. This Flocon is definitely going to be the win con here for the Saints. Yes, Lig is also uh, pretty strong with those two items, but this Smolder, level 12, is going to have to get as much CS as possible. We can see 193 at 18 minutes. That's an insane number. More than 10 CS a minute, and they might be looking to dive this top, and I don't think they ever have the damage here. Flocon should get over this wall. Oh, no, uh -oh. he gets caught there. Might have to flash out, but Nudo ultimate going to be beautiful. Should do a lot of damage. This Cassante can the Smolder get the shot down on this Cassante. That'll be massive. No, he's going to be able to get out of with everything. Somehow survives that, goes unstoppable. And now Converse are looking for the collapse. The redemption comes through. Can the Saints just get out of here? Unharmed the Pike. We'll be looking for a kill here onto Maddie. Will he find the hook on 21? Miracle does get hooked, tries to flash out. But here is the follow up. There goes Miracle. There goes Ricky. Two kills going over to the side of Converse. They, they survived the initial engage. The Cassante just too tanky. And they are able to win out the fight going to for zero.
very well played. Saints are going to be able to take that tower at the very least, but still getting pushed back, losing your Ricky LaFleur. Not something you ever want to do. And I just want to say, I was right. <laughs> okay, for some reason, every time I see Ricky on this next it's, it's not, not it. a great game. <laughs> and I was completely wrong as well. I said, usually you have to commit a lot to stop Ricky in his lane, force him to not have impact, but they didn't have to commit anything. Because yeah. they just kind of won yeah. the lane for free, you know? Uh, but still, Ricky able to have a lot of impact regardless. Um, and his score line is not exactly reflecting oh, that, what? but he's still such a huge issue. Uh, they're going to be going for a fight here. Flocon in a lot of trouble. Mad is going to be able here to alleviate some of that pressure. Miracle coming from the jungle side. Force him to retreat. Going to go for that smite. Slow him down quite a bit. Flocon trying to put on the damage. Miracle Lee coming on the from behind as well. Miracle coming off to the right side. Trying to pincer him. But Phantom Star is going to go for the hook. And in fact, going to turn their attention to the Phantom. Or the Pike. Die. Phantom Star is going to go down, taking him out. And they Get want to keep there, pushing the issue. Go for it, buddy. Chase him down. Put him down. Look at Maddie on the new new. Oh, but the ultimate's gonna cause the damage to just really mount up, ramp up, take down Zab, burn that tree to a crisp, and cool it off with a nice snowball from Maddie. No way they're going to win. There's no way they can. That, this is a very, very interesting play. TP comes out from the Corky Saints. I don't think they're going to play to finish here. They're definitely going to play for the turn, but it's looking very dangerous. There's such low health bars. Look, looking for the old miracle. Does go in. Saints, a good engager. Can they get the shutdown on the Cassante? Ricky, going to find the flash stun. They take down the Cassante. It's a huge, huge. shutdown to Ricky Lafer. Can they find the chase? Ezreal, no E. Can anyone get on top of that one? No, but the Single Corky man. here does have the flash, Anything. but Maddie should be able to chase someone down. The blue spike coming on in just a second. He's actually going to flash. Will trade a kill onto that rail, but won't have flash for the next big team fight. So much damage. Finds the core, the Callista on the flip side as well. Now Saints on the run. Have to be careful for this Pike. Ricky, though, does have that W Woo. ready if he needs to find a stun. Still, it's a good team fight for the Saints, even though Callista did fall down. They get the Corky flash. They get a couple shutdowns. The Cassante falls, and now Saints put themselves in the position to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, that was a huge kill, picking up that Cassante, and I believe it was Ricky that picked up that kill, so a yeah. lot of gold going his way in particular. That should help him become a little bit scarier, a little bit more potent and a little bit more survival. I feel like that's the main issue. They burst him down a little bit too fast. Yeah, he's, he's behind a lot. Yeah, uh, but just even a little bit, just one more second of impact on this Renekton could cause a lot of problems for the side of Converse. Now, uh, looking at the ADC side of things, Leak still just does so much damage. He just hasn't been able to get into a position to do that damage, you know what I mean? And I feel like as the game goes on, it's going to be a little bit more and more easier for him to get comfortable and get there. They just have to make sure that they're not getting steamrolled in the process, and that's being difficult because of uh, Hope 1 on this Ezreal, able to kite uh -oh. so effectively, has the uh, speed leak, and the hook. Nope. getting chased down, gonna get that yeah. hook, and he's just like that, taken to nothing, the complete opposite of what I said should be happening. It's gonna go the way of Converse University, 10 to 2, 39k to 41, and it's just 22 minutes into this game, Maddie taunting a little bit, <laughs> seeing if you can go them into an assault. Coming up, we're gonna be waiting for a little bit more potent damage. The Kalissa is dead. Do you really wanna go for anything here, let alone anything risky. Daisy's gonna get called down. Ricky gonna go and be forced into an exchange. He's gonna get pulled back into Converse University. He's still miracle. low. Miracle low as well, but the ultimate awesome coming up from Flocon. gonna do a lot of damage. Eagle's low. It's gonna get taken out. Here. Ricky's still up. Still up. Still doing a lot of damage. He's gonna go down eventually, but they're still shredding through Converse University, but they're shredding them back. St. Clair College losing three in the midst of all that chaos. Without League there, they weren't able to just do enough burst damage to make things work, and as a result, they're gonna go down, oh, lose this Wow. Tower, but oh, gets a kill. eight close, Doing scary. So much damage. He's gonna keep pressing the issue. And if he had a little, just one more person here, it would be guaranteed. But he doesn't want to take the risk of going down. If they get that hook, they get one stun. He's dead, and they want to make it happen. A huge Q coming up from the Ezreal, dodging it, oh, dodging even more. TP. TP coming up from behind. Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be Flocon, most likely making his way in oh. here. But he's gonna go down a little bit too fast. Going to hope he's huge gonna find him, get the shutdown, make sure that they bleed for that one. Not going to be free. Ricky T being mid as well. Do they want to push for a tower? Do they want to push for objectives? Not exactly sure what the Saints are going to be looking for here, but at least they have some agency to make something happen. I mean, this whole game is on uh, Flocon at this point. If he just hit yeah. that ultimate with a rail engage on that last team fight, could have been an insane wipe. Still did so much damage, but the scaling from the smolder is going to be very, very scary. Saints are actually going to be the ones to start up the dragon from the look of things, and they're going to be taking it instantly. Let's see if they look to fight this. I think they're going to look to no. get.
get out. Let the smolder keep farming up. Yep. And in these team fights, the damage coming up from the smolder is going to be insane. Getting that shutdown onto the Ezreal. Definitely a nice boost in the economy. And you can see the Kalista kind of struggling to get into range there. It gets everyone down to 1 HP. We just cannot find the final blow. Going to be down. Good amount of XP here on the Kalista. But on the flip side, the smolder is up a level on everyone in the game. The damage with the RFC is going to be incredible. And with that 250 CS, it's just going to be all on a mid laner here to carry for the Saints. I feel like they need to make time, like you said. Uh, they're going to have to rely on Flocon to carry the game just a little bit longer. Oh, Ricky? Give some time for League to catch up. But Ricky, maybe even doing a little bit of work himself here. With that snowball, able to Corky? find anything here. That would be huge. Corky is oh. going to get out of the way. Not going to be facing that one down. And Saints just squaring off in the mid lane. I feel like just getting that tower just alleviate a lot of their worries right now. Just open up a little space on the map, give them some breathing room, allow them to play, wiggle around their toes a little bit, just do something without that oppressive tower just waiting on them. But on that sideline, Flocon's gonna get caught. He's not too squishy. He's gonna be able to take that, but taking down half HP, one more of that, he's gonna go low. But Kassante's bottom side, fought. Kassante, farming, pushing, disrupting, forcing an answer. It's not what you wanna be seeing when you're already playing on the back foot. Saints looking for a response, but no response seems like a good one right now. Yeah, I mean, this is great macro from Converse. They know Ricky doesn't have flash, so he's not a big threat in this 5v4. As the engage comes through, Pike, absolute psycho play. We'll get out on one. On HP, the ultimate from Kalista will keep a member alive. Miracle able to stay alive. No smolder here just Ooh. yet. There's a big engage. Kasante going in. Oh my god. Takes him over the wall. Takes what? Lig as well. Should be able to pick that one up. Kasante showing why he's so strong. Ricky is going to flash in 1v5. Can they find a kill onto the Ivern? Doesn't look to be the case. Can the smolder get anything done here? Should be able to pick up the Kasante. There's one. Pike should be going down the process too. No, he stays alive with that ultimate. Does pick up Ricky. as a 2v4 scenario for the Saints, but Fulcon is still alive. 1e. E on any of these members, I think, takes them out. This Pike has to be extremely cautious with walking up here. One ability on him takes him down. You can see Saints are dropping like flies, but in these team fights, as long as the Smolder's alive, there's still a threat on their side. Absolutely. Flocon is the final hope of this team fight. Lee getting taken to downtown all the way to Brazil from the comfort <laughs> of his own home. That was not good. Across the wall, not at all. And we haven't heard from him since. Um, there's a guy who's claiming to be League right now. Not yeah. sure if it's the same one, but he's not as strong as League was before that situation. He's a lot more scared, a lot shakier. Now they know what can happen to him in these team fights. Hopefully the Saints are going to play things a little bit more carefully, avoid walls, not to get taken into the Shadow Realm, but still. Um, the game plan hasn't changed for the Saints right now. They need to make time for League to catch back up because he's still a big threat and Kalista, like I said, reeks of consistency. As long as she's in the situation where she's good, she's good and she's really good. She just hasn't been able to get into those situations because of the disruption on the side of Converse University. And they're causing so much problems for St. Clair College in terms of how they want to take these team fights. And it's just going their way every single time. League is now behind as a result, even though he was pretty consistently and comfortably ahead for the most part. But the thing is, Ezreal, the way he plays is so much safer and he's able to be a lot more effective without putting himself into harm's way, whereas Kalista really has to get her nails dirty, get into the nitty gritty to have any kind of an effect. Now we're seeing the 14, level 14 uh, Ezreal, level 12 Kalista, not what you want to be seeing, but the Saints just have to take their time and farm smart, farm comfortably to make sure they give themselves a road to victory while relying on Flocon to allow that to happen. Yeah, new uh, dragon spawning up in a minute 13. Pike looking for a hook here, doesn't find anything. Him having that edge of night is so so good for him he's just able to basically face tank any cc he wants and st Clair don't have that much cc so he has an extra life basically at that point ezreal ult gonna hit on to three nice little chunk before this dragon spawns but the heal should be coming through almost a q hitting there from the ivern would have been a team fight erupted immediately can the saints pull the trigger here miracle gonna take so much damage before the fight's even gonna kick off pike can look for a hook will take a good amount of damage there but the ivern shields on let's keep him alive because on is here. Ricky is TPing. It's a 5v5 in the mid lane. Cork is just arriving. Saints are still alive. And they're looking to go for Ricky. Gets pulled into the whole team. Look at the engage though for Miracle. They pick it's up one. Huge. And they pick up Ego Smolder. Doing all the damage he can. There's a trade one for one. Maddie goes down. But they are able to the pick Q. up the second.
and Ricky lives on one HP. And look at the smolder damage now completely in the oh my god! Damage from Lig and Flocon. They take down the Ivern. The Ezreal gets taken down to one HP as well. The dragon no looking way. very good for the Saints. That Ezreal would actually hit onto Lig. So that's a lot of damage done. They have to be careful. They're not in the clear just yet, but they do get vision on the Ezreal. He is forced all the way down. They're going to take this tier one. They're going to take the dragon as Saints look to take control back of this game. Flocon, you have a lot of burden on your shoulders and he's carrying it like it's nothing. Ricky, of course, with the iconic Ricky TP to just start causing some problems. And he was a problem. He was tearing up Ego. And to be fair, Ego is tearing him up back. But every second Ego is tearing up Ricky, he's not tearing up anybody else on the side of the yeah. Saints. And right, you can't ignore a Renekton rampaging through your backside. So he had to answer it. And I guess enough time My for Saints to do something. Oh, you're absolutely right. And the Saints are too low. They don't want to contest this. They have to go home. And Baron is basically as good as Converse University. Yeah, I mean, it's a double TP. It looks like a completely free Baron. You can see Saints are trying to TP to it, but I think they're just way too late. All five yeah. members from side of Converse oh, get over greedy. here very, very quickly. And I mean, it's not the end of the world for the Saints. They get the Dragon, put themselves on soul point, but they will not be able to contest that Baron as it goes down without a contest to Converse. They won't be able to contest it, but do they want to try to answer it? I don't know if they do, but as they get disengaged, let's take a look at a replay of the action that happened a little bit earlier that allowed us to be put in this situation in the first place. That fight from just a bit ago, Ricky TP in, the huge knockup miracle just being such a Thorn and the side of Converse University and Ricky just tanking the entire enemy team and that huge ultimate gonna get taken down the Pike, taking down the Cassante as well. Rick Matty was gonna go down too, but still it opened up so much opportunity in this oh. team fight and that nice spear from League follow up from uh, Flocon to get that last second kill and that's exactly what the Saints needed to get themselves brought back into this game. But with Baron on the side of Converse University, things are shaking up and things are looking a lot scarier. The Saints have two, uh, three dragons. The Converse Universities too, but does that really matter when you're facing this overwhelming force? I mean, Smolder's now on four items, has that vamp sector as well. It's gonna be so hard to kill as soon as level 18 is hit on there. Corky, very quietly also on four items. Doesn't feel like the Corky's had the most impact in these team fights, but he's definitely dis dishing out the damage. Ricky, gonna have those three items, will be pretty tanky. Maddie as well on those three items. Everyone's relatively fed in this game. The Ezreal is the big standout point here for Converse. Way ahead of this Kalista up an item up two levels. So the fact that Saints are even keeping these fights close in the first place, I mean, Flocon gets a lot of the praise for the, his performance so far. Ricky gets caught out by a hook. Can he get out? Yes, he will be able to eat out, but that does take a good chunk of his HP. Baron is still on the uh, on Converse here for a good amount. They have this bot wave coming in. I wonder if Smolder is going to use the ultimate to clear this. This one, let's take a look if Flocon decides to do that one. No, Smolder can just clear the whole wave from a safe distance very easily. Pike getting the Edge of Night progged here. Now this wave is going to be the one where Converse look to take the turret on. Can the Saints defend their turrets? Half HP. I don't know if they're going to be able to do so, but it looks like they will be able to. The Daisy is spawned in. The Cannon Minion is going to be firing away. The turret is just one shot away, but and they will be able to take it down. The Inhibitor will drop as well as Smolder is in base. Probably buying a red potion as the Inhib will fall down, but now Saints gonna look for the engage. Katante gonna be the, one, the target chosen here by the Saints. Eagle has that flash, wants to get out, does Maddie dash out. Maddie has to be careful here, can't do too much without the snowball. Saints taken so low, but the smolder is still full HP. The ultimate comes out. Can they find the pick onto the smolder? Not just yet. Maddie gonna be forced to ult, will go down first. And Pike is in pretty deep. Will be able to stay alive. This Ezreal, though, level 16, doing such immense damage, making it hard for the Saints to walk anywhere. Very scary. Saints have to play that like it was a bomb defusal situation. They couldn't go too far. Oh, they find Ego, they disrupt his recall, and he's by himself taken Good. down the Cassante. Flocon getting that kill as well, just to make him uh, just stack even more and more and more. Such a top-heavy team right now. Flocon really bearing the weight of this game, but still managing to do so. He's gonna just barely escape with that recall on the side of Converse University, but that's two Barons gone, or one Baron gone. I mean, I think it's done with anyway. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. God, it has it there. <laughs> to it, not just on death, but still, Saints, I feel like at this point, it's it's really scary to try to push out of your base knowing that you can get gone on and taken down so fast, especially with that pike just roaming around with that huge disc around and making it so easy to get those initiations, but 
you have to do something. You have to look for a play pickoffs. This is a situation where you're inclined to turtle and uh, force yourself into your base. But if you do that, the gap between the opponent team and yours just gets even wider and wider. So you have to look for a play. And I feel like if they go for a pickoff onto maybe Corky as he's farming a different lane, it's going to be risky. It's going to be very difficult to find, but they have to look for something impactful to open themselves back into this game. You can see both of the Saints ADC getting a Vamp Scepter because that Ezreal poke, Corky pork, poke, is just getting so, so dangerous at this part of the game. Maddie, he's going to look for a snowball, doesn't find anything. Ricky just blind checking that Pike. This Pike might be in some trouble, uh -oh. but Ricky might be in more trouble. Takes a lot of damage there from the Ezreal. As they're looking to full commit, Ricky yep. does get hit by the Hulk. Look at the engage from Miracle. The small oh my God. All five members stuck in there. What is happening? Go the smolder. Ricky gonna get taken over the wall. Does get taken out. Smolder now with the triple kill. Eagle will be taking him down. The Saints are four, uh, 3v2 here, but they don't have too much damage. The Callista is still so, so weak. The smolder somehow got picked off by the Cassante, and this dragon will more than likely go over to Converse. I don't think Saints can 3v2 them, but that was such a huge engage by Miracle. If that smolder ult was just a little bit more on point, yeah. it would have been a clean wipe, but still, Saints showing some signs of life, even even in a game state, that's maybe not too good for them. They're going to be able to stall out. This dragon is not going to be taken just yet, but the bot inhibitor has to be defended. So it's definitely going to be Converse picking this dragon up as it's going to be tied up at three apiece. Uh, that's just what I was thinking, Theo. If that ultimate was just more placed appropriately from uh, Flocon, that would have been devastating. But they didn't have vision of it. But let's go ahead and take a look at how that fight ended up going. Like you said, the initiation from Miracle Insane. saving it. But they were in such a perfect op uh, position for the also, but let's go through the oh. perfect initiation, the stuns, the knockups, the follow up. It's all there. They just didn't have enough lockdown to force them to sit still and eat the damage. Not able to go over the wall, not able to chase them into the pit. It's going to break away from them eventually, but they made the most of what they were given. And I think that's all you can ask for in a situation like this. If Flocon survived that situation, yeah, you couldn't ask for anything some. better. But yeah. still, uh, Saints, like you said, showing signs of life. League still uh, at least two levels behind the Ezreal consistently, but a scary threat if given the opportunity to just sit and do damage. Hope one, very tanky, honestly, yeah. on that Ezreal. Thanks to that Bloodthirster, but Ricky gonna get out of dodge, get out of the situation. He has that TP, so he just wants to answer the bottom wave and then get back to this fight if it's necessary, but still, what Maddie's been able to do on this Nunu is just quarter off these fights. Oh, they go in, going for that initiation. Two of them on top of him. The ultimate is going to get wiped out. Zab is out of this fight. Ricky good. is here now. Very good. That's going to be a Cassante out of this fight. Ezreal forced to stare down Ricky LaFleur. It's supposed to end with this wave. Corky's TPing into the base. Corky's TPing into oh the base. Oh my god, he wants the back line. It. Yeah, Flocon's going back home. They recognize that minimap awareness at 100%. Miracle looking to find Hope One. He's going to go over the wall. Now it's going to be they a battle that base here. in the back line. Flash. If they can play this Flash. properly, Matty with the snowball. Can he make this work? Go for it, buddy. Ah, oh, the wolves. You traitorous but bastards. No way. The Flash is going to keep him alive for now. Phantom Star is going to go down trying to get League. He's going to be running for his life. Ezreal going for that skill shot. Not going to land. Him. Fighting for his life. Running for his life. These teammates are nowhere here. Not going to be able to help him. League is going to go down, but it's not going to be free. A lot of blood was oh, spilled on the side of Converse maybe. University and more blood might oh, be know getting spilled here. here. They know exactly where he is. They know exactly what's going to happen. Can he get that kill before he goes out? Absolutely not. With the Could rest of the Saints here, they're going to take him down. And the Saints are slowly pushing a path to victory for themselves here. Is League a part of that right now with Calista? <laughs> not exactly, but Flocon all the way, baby. Take us home. I mean, it's Flocon against Hope. Hope is doing God's work yeah, on this as we just went in kind of 1v5. Dash here, dash there. I'll do some poke here. I'll take out your ADC. Do this, do that. Great play by Hope on this Ezreal. And you could see the 5 item Ezreal with the Frozen Heart because so tanky, hard to kill. But the fact Saints took that fight 4v5, Ricky TP'd in late, but with that smolder rel combo, they just are able to do so, so much damage. Let's see what's oh. going on in the mid lane. Ricky is looking for a pick onto Hope. Can he find the stun? Oh, it is. Can stun? they find the one shot? No, Flocon. The Hope will get away with that E. This is still looking pretty good for the Saints. Ricky is going to blast going out there. He should be completely fine unless the Pike is able to pick that kill up. Let's see if Ricky is able to maybe squeeze out the 1v1 here. Is able to stay alive. Pike does have that ultimate, but it's not enough damage onto Ricky just yet. They're going to look to keep chasing. The hook oh. comes out. Matty does dodge that one out. Flocon is still here. Here comes Link. Rel with the engage. Nice! Get the small run. The follow-up. Ezreal is going to be taken down and what is going to be do? the game. 
there should be the second kill going down to Smolder Saints. Just need to run it down into the base. Will they go for the Baron? I think they have to go for the end here with this Ezreal dead. You're not going to get better opportunities at this. The Pike is going to be triple kill for the Smolder Saints. Kind of take him out. Pentakill if they can pick up this <laughs> Ivern. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to do so just yet. They're going for the Corky. That's probably the better play call. But with two members alive, they should be able to find the end here. They do have a couple minions. They need to tank this turn. Unbelievable. With their members, Ricky going to pop their ultimate tanking one turn. They're going to be looking onto the Corky. Can they pick him up? Yes, dude. That's a quadra kill. Unofficial. And he's not going to be able oh. to get the Ivern. But they are going to win the game. Saints with an immaculate comeback. And Focon, definitely the focal point of that one. The Saints take the series 2-0. Theo. Insane. How do you go from losing the game so harshly to winning it in like two minutes? Smolder. Not even. It was like one minute. Flocon just devastating the back line and the front line. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, I even have a chance to, was the Cassante was slowly waning in his relevancy and then Reiki was becoming more and more prominent, a lot harder to deal with. But still, all that being said, it amounts to absolutely nothing when you consider the fact that this Flocon rookie to the team Team, brand new face playing like a vet, an absolute star, and shining through, allowing his team to just steal away with the victory in the last possible second. Absolutely. Miracle definitely gets a lot of praise as well. Those rel engages were absolutely immense. If they just get the teamwork with getting the smolder ult into the rel ultimate, they might be unstoppable. But even without those amazing combos, Miracle just getting the five-man engages and the follow-up damage was just insane. Saints definitely steal one their way that they probably shouldn't have and they're going to be very happy with that 2-0 performance. Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine the dread that would be on their faces right now knowing that they have class tomorrow. Oh, have to go, to, have a game to, go three. to a game three. This was 40 minutes long. It was so close at the end there. We were doing so well, and we still lost. We, we didn't, though. We got ratted. We they didn't. got to their base, but we won. <laughs> we okay, and it was very beautiful. Just one by one. That I think what really opened up that fight was that kill onto the Cassante. Actually, no, it was the Ezreal first, real, yeah. and then... And like, then the, they fall like dominoes. They're like, oh, wait. We have no team. We have no team. <laughs> and, then, died. and then they just started dying, and then the base is just killed. Game over. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you learn anything from that game in your games of League of Legends, it's spread never give out. up. Well, never give up if you're on the Saints side, and if you're on Converse University side, don't be so top heavy. Spread out the gold. Spread it out <laughs> just a little bit, as you saw. Um, you know, we saw uh, Flocon go down a couple of times, but the still the fight was still there. You know, uh, League was far behind near the end of that game, but from that early to mid, and he still had some potency, still able to do some damage. Yeah, but big, big poke with his cues. Yeah, everybody was able to do something on the side of the Saints, but literally, as soon as Ezreal died, the instantly, game was over. Instantly. That Ezreal, it was just Ezreal was versus Smolder at the end. There. Smolder, I think, finished 18-1 there on, in the something mid lane. Like it, was, it was insane performance, but the whole team did a great job of keeping that Smolder alive and letting the Smolder shine. And just one mistake at the end there from the Ezreal, mm -hmm. you instantly lose the game. Yeah, absolutely. But that was a fantastic series. 2-0, just like Ricky said. You just know? like Ricky said. Ricky's never wrong. Never. <laughs> but a fantastic series nonetheless. Converse University giving us one hell of a oh, show. Yeah. Good absolutely. game. What, what were some of your favorite moments um, going through that series, just walking down memory lane? I mean, both games, Saints fell apart early into the game. And, you know, they have Alonso as their coach. They work on their macros so, so much. And just with those simple plays, even when the team fights didn't work out, they were taking a good good uh, opportunities they were able to get some cross maps even even when it didn't look good they were down 10 kills only down mm -hmm. 2,000 gold something's not right there so the Saints definitely did a good job with their macro I think that's something they're going to be very happy with one thing they won't be happy with is the early game deaths in the lanes I think Alonso is going to be on them for that one and I think <laughs> in the future we might see that cleaned up he's going to bring out the whip potentially, <laughs> I don't know but, about that uh, <laughs> I hope not for their sake absolutely but it'd be fun to watch it would be I would cast that <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the series here. And before we wrap up, of course, we got to say our thank yous and goodbyes. So, but first, of course, a thank you. Thank you to Alienware, Tim Horns, Subway, Sanker College Alumni Association, and the Sanker College SRC. And thank you to everybody in the back putting on this show. We had some fancy picture-in-picture -picture replays. I don't think we've done that before. I don't so. think so. Happy to see it very good. his debut here today. Yeah, it was it was a very very much fun. I think tomorrow on the schedule we have a Valorant. Uh, it's gonna so. yeah, it's gonna be a good game. So I'll be there. I'll be casting. <laughs> Should be fun. But yeah, it's it great games today. Yeah, I won't be there. I'll be coaching, <laughs> but I'll be there in spirit, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you had a fantastic evening. Thank you very much for spending it with us, and we hope you have a fantastic night. We'll see you guys tomorrow.